Hello, welcome. Take a moment, try this problem out, and then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. Okay, so it says algebraically determine the roots in simplest a plus bi form to this equation. All right, so let's solve it. I'm going to write a little bit larger. So x squared minus 2x plus 7 equals 4x minus 10. All right, well, I'm going to subtract 4x and add 10. Subtract 4x and add 10 to both sides. We get 0 over here. And then I have x squared, and this is minus 6x plus 17. And then I'm going to use my quadratic formula. x equals negative b, right, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Look at that one. All right, negative b. Well, the opposite of negative 6 is 6, plus or minus b squared. So negative 6 squared is 36 minus 4 times a, which is 1 times c, which is 17, all over 2 times a, which is 1. All right, so it's going to get us 6 plus or minus this mess in here. So 36 minus uh, 68, right? 36, I think, minus 68. Am I doing that right? Okay, quit out of here. Long day. Let's just do it on the calculator. 36 minus, what did I say? 4, well, so four times 17, which is 68. Well, we'll do that. All right, negative 32. So that's, you can see that's a negative, we're taking the square of a negative number, so it's going to be imaginary. All right, well, um, let me, so let me say that a nice little shortcut here, I'll sh I guess I'll show it in, in two ways, I'll show you the shortcut. Well, I mean, it's not a shortcut, but it's just fun to do. The square root of two, uh, the two is the same as the square root of four, right? So six divided by the square root of four, which is two, that's, Three, but then negative thirty-two divided by um, four. You can do. You can actually divide these because they're both under square roots. So uh, I would just rewrite two as the square root of four, and then you can say that's the square root of negative eight, which is a lot easier to think about. And that becomes three plus or minus. Well, this is. I'll kind of break it down for you. It's the square root of negative one times the square root of eight. And that becomes 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 1, that's i. And then the square root of 8 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And that gets us 3 plus or minus 2 times i times the square root of 2. Those are our two roots. So um, that was my shortcut. If I didn't know the shortcut, let's go back here. I'd have this as a 2. Okay, so what would I do? Well, the square root of negative 32, so we have 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 32 over 2. And let me move that over. I need like to have it over here. Okay. Well, the square root of 32 is really 16 times 2, so it's 6 plus or minus i, that's the square root of negative 1, times the square root of 16 times the square root of 2 all over 2. And it's a little messy, sorry. That gets us 6 plus or minus i. The square root of 16 is 4 times the square root of 2 all over 2. Now, when we divide our numerator by 2, we divide everything by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3 plus or minus 4 divided by 2 is 2 i times the square root of 2. I don't need to, I only need to divide one of these factors by 2, and the easiest choice is 4. Clearly, this is the same as this. Now, uh, you might want to write explicitly what the roots are. So you can say x equals, right? These are our roots, um, 3 plus 2i times the square root of 2. And then x equals uh, 3 minus 2i times the square root of 2. You might even circle them and say these are the roots. These are the values where x is 0. Now what they say in part b, they mention a system. Uh, these are the same two equations. Notice that um, over here we have 4x minus 10. That's one equation. And the other equation, this quadratic, this parabola, is right here. So we're just thinking about it as a system. So it says, gra the graph of the system confirms the solution from part a is imaginary. Explain why. What you want to do is you want to say they essentially that they don't cross. They do don't cross or intersect 
at any point on the graph, and then you might you might elaborate. You might say, so there is no real x value that solves this, and you you know you would probably confirm that for yourself, right? So you have clear off some old graphs here. Okay, so let me just x squared minus two x plus seven. So x squared, and then minus two x plus seven. There's one. And the other one is four x minus ten. So four x minus 10 and let's go to the graph so here's, there's our parabola there's the line and um, here you might elaborate on your window a little bit maybe they want you to sketch it I don't know they don't they're not asking for it explicitly here but if we go to 30 in graph you can see there's the parabola in line they're definitely not going to cross so you want to say that you know, this is a graph where you have all the real numbers for x down here and none of the real numbers you plug in uh, will show you an intersection. The intersection happens in the complex plane, which you could say comes kind of out in three dimensions, kind of towards you here. And if you kind of drag the parabola, you would see it cross the line in this other plane, which is a, it's a really cool kind of thing. There's a nice animations on YouTube um, and online of that. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks.